Now, you mentioned that Elvis would come to the hangar sometime. He did. I never met him uh, there, but he would come down and see my dad, and they would visit and stuff, sure. And I recall, um, and of course, it's been a little while since you and I have talked about this. You know, uh, I called you quite a while ago investigating the Circle G thing. You mentioned that um, that somebody came to the hangar to try to tell you that Elvis was not, or tell your dad that Elvis was not going to buy the Circle G. Did, is that accurate? Did that happen? That, that's that's a fact. Uh, two, I call them henchmen because so many people bummed off of him so much and. Uh, you know, it was a free ride for them, but they were just, you know, for nothing else to do, for whatever reason, they decided that they were going to come down. And uh, anyway, they, I really shortened the story. They showed up, and the lady out front asked them who they were and, you know, what they want to see Mr. Adams. And so, what, uh, in reference to what? And he said, uh, Mr. Presley. So, anyway, Betty went back there and uh, uh, told Dad, he said, we're well, bringing them on back. Long story short, uh, they told Eddie that Mr. Presley had backed out and was not going to buy the farm. Dad said, tell you what, y'all just have a seat and uh, get Mr. Presley on the phone. I have an extension over there at the couch and let him tell me that. And uh, Elvis Stone said, no, sir, I shook your hand and looked you in the eye. A deal's a deal. And I'm not bad. So Daddy asked him in a not as in a little nicer way than I would have probably to get their back in out of his office. <laughs> I speculate that Vernon sent him. Because <laughs> Vernon, is, he was always scared to death that he was going to spend some money. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that may have been what happened. That is a very interesting story. Now, you've heard the story secondhand. Of course, you were not there, but no. your dad told you that story. Right. And he didn't know who the, the two particular guys were, but... No, we the, were just Memphis two, Mafia, no no them, question. You know, whoever, out of all of them that were lined up. Yeah, there was a bunch of them. All right, so we were talking about Dr. Black, uh, the apothecary. He's familiar with Dr. Black. But you mentioned, we were talking about how Dr. Nick actually met Elvis the first time to attend the saddle sores at the Circle G Ranch. But then you mentioned that you actually flew Dr. Nick. I did. He had called my dad, and they somehow or another knew each other, and he wanted to go somewhere over in Alabama. And I had just gotten my type rating in a Cessna Citation. And uh, Daddy said, won't you take him over there and that? So, And I got Monty Hudspeth, who was at the Olive Branch Airport, to be my co-pilot. He had a, it was a two-pilot kind of deal. And anyway, I fl uh, flew Dr. Nick over there, and uh, on landing, uh, I was never very much on the checklist and I forgot to put my flaps down and so when I land I went to flare to land and boy that sucker dropped I didn't have the lift from the flaps so gives you that thing the ground so hard that was the last time he ever asked daddy to take him anywhere we didn't even go back and pick him up he got home somehow or another yeah. <laughs> so you scared him so bad he wouldn't fly back with you <laughs> so when when you had the flaps up like that the thing literally falls out of the air it, it loses lift for a moment right now you didn't fall but probably what 10 feet or something like that Most, you know, but it was still a hit though it, it, it got his attention, got my attention too. Sure. so uh, you make that mistake one time and, right. and flap it the next time right exactly. <laughs> that is hilarious that's a great story um so we were talking about a lot of these pictures were taken it looks like uh, some of them are dated on the back February of 67. So what that tells me is your dad knew the historic significance of Elvis buying this ranch and was smart enough to go make pictures of it at the time. That's pretty telling. He was a smart guy. He was. He, he was. And he liked people and he, you know, anybody that like Elvis was, you know, he was really uh, into Elvis, really liked him and he used to talk, say a lot of good things about him. That is that is very cool. Um, he did. We're, we've got some photo, some shots of the inside of this house that are incredible. He really did a number on this house. It was absolutely gorgeous on the inside. It was was that kind of a was that a um, uh, something that he took pride? I mean, was it like a show place for him? He just liked nice things, and it was so close to his airport. 
he would take uh, you know customers that would in, he'd take them up there and show them his place and they may sit down and have a can of Vienna sausage you know and uh, uh, but that yeah he just really really liked nice things he didn't do anything halfway overdid everything most of the time it looked like a point of pride for him that home yeah. the way he fixed it up yeah. and building that bridge over it was over the top I mean the lake is is large but it's not that large so that that bridge had to cost some money to to build Imagine it did. But that's his, that's his thing. He was almost a little bit of a show off, would you say, maybe? A little eccentric. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had an uncle that was uh, very much like that. Every time I saw him, he was always driving an Eldorado with the horns on the front, the big cowboy hat, and, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, he liked to show off. The difference is my uncle was always really broke, and <laughs> your dad actually made money. Well, he, he <laughs> made some, but he didn't, uh, when he left here, he didn't have any, that's for sure. He liked to spend it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there's a story that, the, the whole story, the narrative that we all know is that Elvis had gone and bought some horses uh, down in Mississippi and was on his way back home, three or four o'clock in the morning. In fact, I believe the stories from my recollection is like 4.30 in the morning. And he saw that cross, said, I've got to have this place. Stopped, knocked on the door of the ranch house. Your dad came to the door. They made a deal, shook hands, and the rest is history. Do you believe that is accurate? No. Right. I don't know. I don't have any proof either way, but I, I don't know that my dad ever even spent the night down there because he liked to be home in the evening. So your his regular home was in Whitehaven? Whitehaven. Okay. In, in Twinkletown. In Twinkletown. So that is very telling. So I think we can establish here that that story didn't happen. Well, I don't know because I don't want to say something that's not correct, right. But I, I but based I, off of your knowledge of your dad and his habits, yeah, would, you would say it's very I, unlikely. I would doubt it. Yes. Okay, that's that's fair assessment, I believe. So, friends, I hadn't didn't have the camera on when he started this next segment, and he's saying that a person of substance. So that's where it starts. His substance is not going to stop by someone's house at three or four o'clock in the morning and knock on the front door. They're going to go on about their business and. Uh, maybe get the address and look up whose it is and try to contact them at a decent time. I know he stayed up a lot uh, late and, and uh, carrying on, and uh, but uh, I, I, I just wouldn't think I wouldn't do that. I know that, and, and I and I believe that. And we've established that on the mailbox in front of the house, it clearly had Jack Adams on there. It had his name on there. So I would believe too that because of the airport being so close, I bet Elvis knew who Jack Adams already was. So when he saw that it was his ranch, he, he might have even gone to y'all's home in Whitehaven and made that deal. Maybe, maybe so. That would be uh, uh, a very uh, possible thing. Do you, do you recall, um, I did some research about Whitehaven High School and I found out that that used to be a World War II airfield. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Where the high school is, where the football field yeah. is, was a landing strip yeah. there yeah. telling me. I remember that now that you, I had forgotten about that, but yes, it did. Okay. So I'm just, uh, that's interesting. You know, I do Elvis history, but I like all history, especially things that are, that are interrelated to other things. There was people that have told me that when they went to high school there in shop class, in the attic of the shop was airplane parts. Hmm. There was props and all kinds of stuff up there in the because that was before it was a, that part of it was a high school It was had something to do with the military. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting Yeah, I don't uh, I now that you brought that up I do remember and I went to Whitehaven graduated in 65 and uh, but I didn't <laughs> well, Was not aware of that until you said something that it kind of brought back memories that, uh, Okay, so that's a question. Do you recall Elvis playing football? at Whitehaven, they would use that football field some. He had actually had EP Enterprises football team, and he would come down there and play. He also sponsored some baseball because I played for Elvis Presley Enterprises in Little League, you know, when I was 11, 12, 10, whatever. Uh, I think maybe my... When were you born? I was born in 47. So 47. So that would have been... Uh, so uh, let's say early 60s, yeah, 50, six, probably late 50s. Late 50s. 60s. So he was, he was um, 
sponsoring those things then when he first started making money, it sounds like. Because his, his first money was uh, 56. When did he buy Graceland? He bought Graceland 57. Okay. So I would think 57, 58, went in the military in 58. So probably 57, 58, would you say? That sounds fair. And even though he was gone, I bet he was still, because he, was, he had a giving heart. You know, he, he, he believed in that kind of stuff. Very cool. I remember, this doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, but I remember when uh, Mr. Golden is a fellow who decorated Elvis's house, and he had us, my dad and mom and little sister and myself, uh, invite us over there before Elvis ever moved in to go see the house. It was interesting. I, I do remember that. Wow. That, man, <laughs> you're all around the Elvis history. But, you know, some things mean something to some people. You were, you were probably uh, thinking about the Beatles. <laughs> well, well in that time, it was, it was earlier than that. What kind of music were you listening to at that time? Do you I recall? Don't, I don't know. I wasn't 10 or 11 years old. Yeah, so you weren't thinking about music, really. I was thinking about baseball at that time because I, I really enjoyed growing up playing baseball. You're a sports guy. Like sports. Yeah, Elvis is a big sports guy. He loved football. He was good, too, you know. Evidently a pretty good player. Played a lot of racquetball, you know, at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning with, with David Meyer, the eye doctor here. Really? Mm hmm. hmm. Is Mr. Meyer still around? Dr. Meyer, yeah. He's is still, he really? He's still here. He would talk to you, too. He would? Oh, yeah. Man, that would be epic. I got, I got to talk to him. I'll, I'll get you his phone number. That's fantastic. That'd be awesome. Um, so your dad built that fence around Circle G. That's correct. And he built the fancy columns where everybody else would have just put a fence up. That's his signature. Yep, that's, that would be his signature. Yep. That's, that's exactly. interesting. All right, so I've, I've got another question. Um, and I know you don't know a whole lot about this, but there's a structure on the backside close to where the house trailers were that I have been told ended up being a Mexican restaurant. And I could pretty much corroborate that because when you go to it, it looks like a structure that would have been in Arizona, let's say, mm -hmm. or in Mexico or New Mexico that has those arches like a cantina. And it actually says cantina on the side of it. But what is confusing about it is there's an in-ground swimming pool on the other side that looks like something that would be at the Moose Lodge or the YMCA. It's giant with a high dive. And I always, when I first went there, I always thought Elvis had this elaborate swimming pool built and this building built and all that kind of stuff. But it appears that that was AE after Elvis. And uh, so do you know anything about that whatsoever? I do not, no, sir. But you're going to put me in touch with a guy that probably does. Yeah, Jan. I bet you Jan can take us. Jan, Jan Man. Jan Man. He lived right south of there. The first house south of the property was Jan's mama's house. He, he lived in that little house that Daddy redid there on the property. Originally. Originally. And he bought, your dad bought it from their family. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jan spent a lot of time there. He even helped your dad as like a farmhand or, or that kind of thing. He actually worked for my dad at the airport. Oh, so he worked at the airport. Jan loved airplanes, still does. He's still in the business and uh, works for a big Franklin Templeton, Templeton, big company out in California. They have some Grumman aircraft and Jan manages them and uh, lives over here in uh, where did I tell you? He lives south of me in Franklin, Tennessee. Franklin, Tennessee. He yeah. lives just south of Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be able to catch him friends in Nashville. Yeah. So I haven't done that interview yet, but I will work on that, and that'll be upcoming. It won't be any time after this at, this at the time that I'm editing this. But anyway, he had this newspaper article. Check this out. It says that they were on the rooftop. This is in the Commercial Appeal. They were on the rooftop of G.P. Little's farmhouse, and that's how they made this photograph. That's how you could see up and over. Within two weeks of them buying the house, which was in February of 1967, they've already put up a 10, what they're saying is a 10-foot high um, plywood fence, which I don't think would be right. It's hard to buy 8, 4 by 10 plywood. It's probably realistically eight foot high and you see it's put directly behind the chain link fence for privacy because there's so many uh people coming out there they said that it's a quarter mile long and it was put up temporarily until they could build a big wooden fence which by the way i don't think ever happened um 
Vernon told him that he's all tied up, real busy buying trucks and that kind of stuff. So he couldn't talk to reporters. And, and so Elvis did go out and buy a bunch. And you can see they've already got the house trailers there. I've really never seen hardly any pictures of this with the trailers behind it. But this is February the 19th. I believe they bought it on February the 10th, coming just off the top of my head. So this quickly, they've already put up plywood. They've already put up fences, that kind of stuff. And they were even saying that the uh, Santa Gertrudis breeders, which is the cows that, remember, Mr. Adams said that his dad bought from Governor Rockefeller. They got those with the farm as well. It's in the news story. And I'm going to try to find this news story and see if there's other pictures. I bet there are. And that'll be another story coming up one day soon. So the Littles that own the house that he's standing on top of taking these photographs, uh, he said that Mr. Little said he couldn't get any sleep because of all the commotion coming and going. And his wife said that she wasn't impressed uh, with uh, having Elvis living as a neighbor. And she said that was is because they were building that fence. She said that he would not actually be a neighbor. He was going into seclusion in this place. So she didn't really feel like it was a, a positive thing for that area. And they were even speculating in the news story that he would sell Graceland and build on this property because it had the lake and the riding stables and all that stuff. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and tighten up. And stay tuned for part three.